Hey Capsuleers, it's me, Anti Elite, with another episode of EVE Basic, how to do the basic things in EVE. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to uh, use probes and scanners. This is for the exploration career path. However, one thing that you'll notice is that once you've done the basic intro agent uh, exploration missions, there are no exploration agents. This is completely a free-form, uh, do-it-yourself profession that you pretty much just have to fly around and scan random things. Now I have done no pre-scanning of this system. I'm currently in LOSA and so I have no idea what to expect here. We'll see if maybe we can find something, if we can scan something down. Um, hopefully we won't get something really difficult to scan down that'll be time-consuming. But if we do, I'll just talk more about anomalies and, and sites and things like that that you can find while you're doing exploration. So, uh, let me close this window here. The very first thing that you'll, uh, the very first thing you want to do is open up your system scanner. Now that's just here to the left of your capacitor. It's right here. It's this little button that says scanner. Hotkey is Alt D, but I hardly ever use that. Now by default it'll come up with the system scanner window. Uh, there's also a directional scan which you'll use, uh, which I'll show you how to use in a later episode. There's also moon analysis which is for POS stuff. Don't worry about that for now. Um, now right here, this looks like a bunch of stuff, um, but let's not worry about that right now. I'll tell you the first thing that you want to do. First thing you want to do is put a, uh, put a core probe launcher in one of your high slots. That is a core probe launcher. You can find that in the launcher section of the market. And then load it up with core scanner probes. Uh, you can find those in the probe section of the market. I think it's in ammunition and charges, but don't quote me on that. You can search for it. Um, some other things you may want to bring with you is analyzers and code breakers. Um, those require some separate skills. I'll talk about those later. Uh, you know what? Let me apologize in advance because this is going to be a very long video talking about all the different skills and all the techniques that you need uh, to be a successful explorer. But, uh, but what I'm going to do right now is just show you the basics of how to scan a system. So one thing I found is that uh, despite the fact that your core scanner or your core probe launcher can hold eight of these probes, you should only use four of them at a time because they do tend to interfere with each other and if you use more than that, then that can negatively affect uh, how long it takes to find anything uh, out in space. So now you'll see that I have four in space. Uh, you see ID here, probe one, two, three, and four. You see the range on each one of those probes? This is a counter for how long they're going to expire. Uh, hopefully it won't take you more than an hour to scan anything out, their status, and whether or not they're active. So one thing that you're going to want to do right off the bat is go to range and set the scan range to 32 AU for each probe. Now I'm not sure if it's 32 AU by default or if it's just down to 4 right now because I've used them recently in a different system. So let's go to 32 AUs. Now the next thing you're going to want to do up here at the top right corner of the scanner window is map. Bring up your map. This will bring up the solar system map. And what you want to do is zoom all the way out. Now what you'll notice is this big blue sphere. Now that's the sphere of, uh, of how my uh, probes, of my probes like range. This is the, uh, this is the radius that they can uh, scan for things in. Now you'll notice right now that uh, uh, this is the outermost orbit of the system. So I should be good to go with where my probes are. I shouldn't have to move them around. Um, so what we'll, what we'll start off by doing is just giving a general scan of the system with all four probes at max, uh, at max range. So let me just hit analyze here. My probes don't have to go anywhere. Um, so let's see what we come up with on the scan. Now the scan results is down here. You can actually filter them, but most of the time I don't bother. So let's see what I got. Look at this. I've got a few things right off the bat, and I got a few things that I don't know what is. Now, so let's say DYJ945. That's the uh, ID of what I'm looking at. It's a cosmic signature. Uh, signal strength is 0.95%. It's very low, and its distance is 13.46 AUs away from me. That is uh, subject to change. Let me click on that. Now you'll see this uh, red sphere now. Um, now that is basically saying that this signature is somewhere within this sphere. So is it wise to move my scan range down right off the bat? Uh, no. No it's not. But what you can do is manipulate your camera so that you're right on top of your probes 
What you want to do is move your probe so that each one is on a different side of what you're trying to scan down. That way they will interfere with each other less and you, they can kind of like bounce off of it. And you can just move your camera and make sure that that sphere is completely within the scan range of all four of your probes. What you want to do is just try and get them to overlap around each other and around this sphere. So I'm going to go ahead and click Analyze again and we'll see what comes up this time. Hopefully it'll be the same uh, signature, only stronger. Now the goal of this is just to get the signal strength as strong as you can, and um, I'll try and tell you when it's easier to, uh, to move your signal down. We can probably do right, this right now, because it's DYJ945, it's 2.74, and notice it's now 4.3 astronomical units away. You remember the first time I scanned it down, I said it was some 13 astronomical units away. So now I've got, uh, I've got my probes on a horizontal plane. I'm just going to move them up a little bit so that they'll be on the same level as that red dot. Now what that red dot is saying is that this, uh, this signature that I'm scanning down is somewhere around there. Um, however, with this, this low of a signal strength, like I said, 2.74, with that low of a signal strength, I can move my I can move my probes down in radius, but uh, I shouldn't move them down too far. I shouldn't get overconfident. But what I do need to do is move them in a little bit so that they are all overlapping around this red dot. Now there are a few other things that can come up, like uh, circles, and uh, sometimes you know two different dots for the same thing. And I'll explain what those are, especially if I end up getting one of those. So let's just keep scanning this down, and we'll see if it comes back stronger or if I've got to take my range back out to 32 AU. I'm now down to 16, which you can see here in the range. My signal strength has gone up. Uh, we're still looking for DYJ, but real quick, let me, let me click on NXJ. You see that circle? That basically means that the signature is somewhere along that plane within that circle. So if I were trying to scan out NXJ, I would move two, one of my probes up to the top of the circle, one of my probes down to the bottom of the circle, the third probe to the left side of the circle, and the fourth probe to the right side of the circle. And I'd probably keep them at the same range for now, but basically what I try and do is surround the center of, of, that, uh, of that red circle with, um, with my probes and then scan it down again. But as it is, we're not trying to scan that one down, we're trying to scan down DYJ. So now you'll see that the red circle has gone down in terms of its height. So let me move my, uh, let me move my probes back down some uh, so that way it can be on about the same plane. Just, there's just a lot of shifting probes around, trying to get them at the right height. Um, I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to do with these probes, and then it's just a matter of experimentation and time. But that's the basic way to scan things down. Just use four probes. Um, take, it, take it easy on how quickly you reduce the range, because one thing you'll find, and this may actually happen here, especially if this is a wormhole, is... Um, is that if you s reduce your range too fast you basically have to start over right at the beginning again with nothing for signature strength so don't be too hasty in reducing the size of your radius now I'm going to go ahead and go into a few of the things that you can expect to see uh, in terms of you know exploring some of the sites that you can run into and some of the things that you'll need for those sites um, basically, all of these sites do require some amount of combat skill, which you really won't have in a in like a rookie ship. So let me let me scan here, and and I'm actually just gonna have to hope for the best, and hope that uh, hope that I didn't try and go too small too soon. But we'll see. All right. So let's scan. Now, so there are four different types of sites that you can get. You can get radar, magnetometric, lidar, and gravimetric. Uh, radar sites are uh, hacking sites and they require the use of code breakers to uh, unlock these cans that, uh, that spawn in uh, the sites. 
Um, magnetometric sites are uh, known as magnetometric signatures by the probes. Uh, these you use analyzers and salvagers in these sites. It's typically uh, it's typically like wreckage, that kind of thing. Um, then you have uh, gravimetric sites. Gravimetric sites are ore belts in space. They're secret hidden ore belts that you can get to. Uh, and some of these can actually be a little bit profitable. You can sell the locations or the bookmarks of these sites to uh, to miners or industrial corporations and they will go there and mine them out and you'll take the money for yourself. Uh, though, If you are a miner, those are sometimes, uh, those sometimes have pirates in them, uh, NPC pirates, so um, you know, just be careful, keep your, uh, keep your drones with you, your combat drones. And LADAR sites are harvestable gas clouds. Gas is used for drug manufacturing in low sec and null sec. Uh, not much use for it in high sec. Um, and then there are a few other types of sites. There's cosmic anomalies, which are, they basically have uh, uh, NPCs, it, uh, drones, sleepers, that kind of thing. Uh, so the anomalies are basically PVE uh, sort of mission type environments. Uh, and then there are also DED complexes, which is pretty much the same thing. They're uh, NPC. Uh, NPC missions that you go into. Now, let me talk about uh, some of the skills that you're going to need for scanning. Um, not entirely sure if I should lower my radius yet, because if you notice, it keeps kind of moving around. I don't like how much it's moving around, but uh, we'll we'll see if uh, we'll see if I can get some some good signal strength. So let me talk about some of the skills that you're going to need if you want to do exploration. Um, some of the skills that you want are hacking. Um, hacking allows the use of code breakers, which you can use in, uh, in like I said, you can use those in the radar sites. Um, salvaging and archaeology can be used in the uh, magnetometric sites. And mining and gas mining are things that you're going to want to have for the radar and gravimetric sites. Now some of the other skills that you might want, I'm actually going to bring up, and, uh, bring up my, yeah, see, my signal strength just went way down on that. So what I may do is just surround it right now, and then make my scan strength higher. So we'll see, or my uh, radius lower, which will make my scan strength higher. Because basically the idea is the lower that these, uh, the smaller that these spheres are, the uh, stronger the the stronger the signal you'll get uh, back from them. So let me just move some of these. Let me move some of these probes around. And when I tell them to scan, I'll show you some of the other helpful skills for starting off with exploration and with probing. Right, scan. Okay, so here are some of the skills in my character window decides it wants to open. Click. Click. There we go. Uh, here's some of the other skills that are very important. Uh, they're in the science tree. Uh, there's archaeology, which is important. Uh, astrometric range finding, that's very helpful. Astrometrics, you actually need that to do, uh, to do scanning. And those are pretty much the two big ones. Astrometric range finding, I'll bring up the info on this so that you can see it too. It gives you a 10% increase to scan probe strength per level. So that helps you find these sites and stuff faster. Astrometrics, that is your skill at operating scanners. It allows one additional probe in space per level. Now, like I said, you only need four of them in space at any given time. So four is fine on that, unless there's some sort of a prereq skill, or uh, that it's some sort of a prereq for something I'm forgetting about. Um, these encryption methods that you see I have trained, those are actually for uh, Tech 2 manufacturing, if I remember right, or Tech 2 research. Um, and then here's archaeology. And code breaking, I think, is in the electronics. Uh, no, because it's called hacking. Well, I forget where I forget where hacking is right now. Anyway, so yep, hacking and astrometric range finding and astrometrics. Now let me get back to trying to scan down this site. You see now I'm at 21.29% on DYJ. So I'm actually going to keep making my probes smaller and smaller 
and smaller and just kind of shifting them and shuffling them so that they can be around the site and hopefully not interfere with each other and give me a bad signal. So now I've sh uh, shuffled them around a little bit. I've shuffled them around that red dot. Let me have them scan again and we'll see if I get anything interesting. Now the other thing that's helpful for exploration, and this is for higher tier exploration, for high sec it's really not too dangerous just to sit in space. But if you're planning on doing some low sec exploration, then I would absolutely recommend that you um, that you train cloaking and that you get into a Tech 2 exploration type ship that can fit cloaking devices, a uh, covert ops cloaking device, so that way you can be cloaky and hide. Uh, Tech 3 cruisers are also good for exploration. They're kind of expensive to get into uh, is, and uh, in terms of ISK and in terms of skills. Uh, it takes quite a few skill points before you can get into those. Uh, so a Tech 3 cruiser is something that uh, you can do later on, but for now, uh, just you know, stick with stick with the frigates and stick with high sec until you get a better hang of how to scan things down and you know what you're what you're looking for. Now, in all of these, they they pretty much all have uh, some sort of NPC pirate ships in them, so. What you will probably need is another combat ship and some combat skills um, to have handy for when you do find a place that you want to go to uh, and you want to check out because that way you don't have to be running away from NPCs or warp in and get popped right away, something along those lines. So I'm going to not bore you with dead air. Um, I'm going to stop my commentary here because that's pretty much all I can say about exploration. Um, I will, however, get back into the commentary once I've completely scanned down this site. Oh, look, here it is. I don't have to stop commentary. It's a rogue drone um, assembly. Let's see what this Asteroid infestation. OK, I don't even know what that is. That must be a unknown site something along those lines. So let me uh, let me reduce the scan range of my probes even more. You'll now see that it's like a little yellow arrow kind of dot thing. You'll see that right there. That means that it's pretty solidly that location. Um, it's not going to be... it's pretty unlikely that it's going to be... Uh, that it's going to move around much at this point, especially because if you notice in my scanner window it is a uh, 91.75%, but uh, I do just want to point out, look at how much that distance had changed. Uh, if you just caught it there, it was 1.75 AU from me, and when I first started, it was, what, 35 AU from me? So it, it's definitely subject to change as you scan it down. And like I said, I didn't use more than four probes. I didn't need to. 100%. There it is right there, green triangle. Now what you're going to want to do is recover active probes. This will automatically warp all your probes back to you and they'll wind up back in your cargo bay. I'll let you watch my cargo bay fill up with these things as they come back. There it is. Oh, astrometric pinpointing, that's another helpful skill. Let me show info on that. Uh, reduces maximum scan deviation by 10% per level. Also another one of those very helpful ones. Uh, let me talk about the prerequisite for that. The prerequisite for that is astrometrics 4 and science 3. So that just makes your scanning more accurate. Let me reload my probes. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to warp to within 100 of this rogue drone assembly, just so you can see it. Now you see it's a DED dead space complex, 3 of 10. Now 3 of 10 means that uh, you can probably do it in, I think it's a cruiser. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, and uh, I'll, I'll change that. Um, but I think that's a, around a cruiser. Uh, one is like really easy, two is really easy, so I'm just kind of going by that. Now let me close the map by clicking this map button again, and we'll see what I run into. Okay, right, it's just a acceleration gate, um, which I will go over in missions, but basically it works the same way as a Stargate. You have to be within two and a half thousand meters of it, and then you can click on this button here. This is activate gate and you'll warp through and you'll warp into combat. 
So that is pretty much it for scanning. It's not too terribly difficult. It just takes some getting used to and you can do it faster and faster. Now some things just do take longer to scan down than others. Uh, some things like wormholes take forever to scan down and some things like these uh, anomalies, they pretty much instantly show up. Uh, you don't even need to have probes out for those to be perfectly honest. Um, combat, uh, combat scanner probes work pretty much the same way, they just work a lot faster. Uh, it doesn't take as much time or effort to use combat scanner probes to find ships that are in space. Um, if you're interested in it, I can get those and make another video, uh, but they do operate pretty much the same way. Um, I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section and I'll be following that closely and answering your questions. Uh, if you like this video, please rate it, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, this is Antelite, signing off.